everybody. I think we're about one minute early to start kindergarten. I just wanted to make sure that everything's working okay. So let me check with my technician. Is it working? Hold on. <laughs> he says, hold on. I can't pull it up. Okay. okay. So before we get started, I just want to make sure that... Go away, go away. Okay, send my technician out of the room. Uh, okay, I want to make sure everyone has what they need for this. You need a few things. You need a puppy, and you need a paw pad, and it's a good idea to have some toys for the brakes when your puppy's not working, because otherwise they'll probably start chewing your shoe or the leash. And of course, you need a tree bag filled with a lot of your puppy's dinner. This is a pup pup. She doesn't have a name yet. Hopefully, she'll have one by next week. So this is Puppy Kindergarten Week 1. Uh, puppy Kindergarten is my very favorite thing to teach and to do because it's a lot of fun to work with your brand new puppy and teach it the skills it's going to need to be a guide dog. Today is about two things mainly, the paw pad and the beginning of impulse control. And we will also finish up with a little bit of body handling. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to demo the skill and I'm going to do it five times and while I'm doing it, if you're not sure or not experienced or um, you just want to make sure you know what you're doing, then just watch me do it and then I will give you a break to practice at home. Uh, I believe there's also a couple of other people from Puppy Raising online to answer questions as they come up, but I'll also check them on the breaks between my demos and see if anyone has any specific questions about anything that I've done. Um, I can tell you right now I'm going to drop treats on the floor, so don't judge me too much. I will try to stop my puppy from eating them, but this from, as we all know, is really small and it falls out of your hand really easily. So um, don't worry if you drop treats, just do your best not to let the puppy pick them up. Okay, so I want to start talking about the paw pad. The paw pad right now does not mean anything to her. It probably means something she would like to chew on if I let her. Um, we love the paw pad because it teaches our puppies to stay aligned on our left side. If our puppies had their way, they would like to sit in front of us and look up at our face and look at our hands going into the treat bag. We don't want them to do that, so instead we're going to teach them that this thing on our left side is just about the best thing in the world. So, she, it doesn't mean anything at all to her right now, but I'm going to give it meaning by giving her a lot of food while she's uh, stepping up onto it. So. We're going to start off by luring the puppy onto the paw pad. To lure, you're going to take a bunch of food, probably about the from, you can probably get about mm, probably 15 kibbles in your hand, like this. And then this is tricky. I usually will, will try to hold them in with my thumb, so I cover most of them with my thumb, but because this kibble is so small, I sometimes actually have to cut my fingers a little bit, um, which is not ideal because it makes it easier for the puppy to bite my fingers. but. Um, the alternative is dropping it. So I do usually cup it and then I put my thumb over it and then we're going to use uh, what's called luring. So luring is putting the food right in front of the puppy's nose and literally getting the puppy to follow the food onto the paw pad. I'm going to demo how that's done. Uh, but basically what you do is you take the food and you put it right by the puppy's nose and then you move your hand really slowly so that the puppy follows it. And one thing people do that causes a problem a lot is when you take your lure hand, see I dropped a piece already. Um, you take your lure hand and you move it really fast like this, that's going to go out of the puppy's line of sight and they're not even going to see it. It's going to cease to exist. So your job is to keep your lure hand right here on the puppy's nose. Um, also, the, this is supposed to be done off leash. Um, I'm going to keep a very light leash on this puppy, but I'm not going to hold the leash. I just want it there in case she tries to run off and go walk about in my house. I want to be able to step on it and stop her from running away and stop me from having to run past the camera and go catch her. Uh, so that's why she has a leash on, but I'm not going to be using it to control her. Okay, so I've got my lure hand and I'm going to back her up just a couple steps. I've got my lure hand right in front of her nose and I'm just going to move it forward. And when she steps up on the paw pad with one foot, I'm going to feed her one treat, and then another, and then another. Good girl. That's a good girl. 
I'm not using the yes marker word yet. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Right now she's just eating and thinking this is the best thing in the world. Now look at where my left foot is. It's right next to the paw pad. That's where your left foot should always be. We want to make a picture for the puppy that always looks the same. We want their right leg by our left foot. Good girl. Haven't dropped one yet. I'm pretty happy about that. All right. And boy, it takes a long time to eat 15 froms. Okay, good girl. So when she's done, I'm gonna pick her up and take her back just a few steps. And then I'm gonna hold her here and get my from out again. Put my hand in front of her face and just move her up. Put my left foot there. Good girl. Good job. I just kind of arbitrarily picked five times as the number to demonstrate with because that's a good number for a lot of puppies. Also, it's easy to remember. But just know that it can be more than five times. Some puppies will need a lot more. Um, some will start to get it after less. Good girl. Whoa, there goes a drop treat. It's really important we don't let them dive down on the floor and get it because that be, that is the beginning of a scavenging habit. So do everything you can not to let the puppy get a treat when you drop it. Okay, this is number three. So I've got, I don't know how many this is, probably about 12. Okay, lure hand, left foot by the paw pad, up on the paw pad. If she paws on my hand, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. She will stop doing that over time. Good girl. We call this pezzing, by the way. I meant to explain that earlier and I forgot. When we're releasing one treat at a time into the dog's mouth, pezzing like an old fashioned pez dispenser, where you release one piece of candy at a time, that's what we're doing here. Good girl. I know, this is so good. Good puppy. It's definitely okay to use verbal praise with this too, while the puppy's eating. Ready? Good. Left foot by the paw pad, up on the paw pad. Pezzing, 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 pezzing. Good girl. If she sits down, I'm just gonna move my hand forward so that she stands up again. It's not the biggest deal in the world if she sits. We would prefer them standing, but it's not the end of the world if they sit. All right, last time. Good girl. She likes this game. I bet your puppy at home is gonna like it just as much. All right, here we go. Blurring. Good girl. Also, I forgot to mention, we want the paw pad up against a surface like a wall because we want a straight guide dog position here. So we, we don't want their butt kind of swung out to the side. She's standing very awkwardly. Her back legs have kind of slid out to either side. Good girl. So in the beginning, we want it against the wall and then we're going to move it off. Okay. Good girl. So that was my five times. So if you have your puppy at home, go ahead and try that with your puppy five times. I'm going to pick up the paw pad because we don't want it just hanging around on the ground when we're not training because then the puppy is either going to start chewing it or they're going to try to go to it and not understand why, uh, why they're not getting rewarded. So we put it up on the counter when it's not in use. Uh, okay. Let me look at this thing and see if anybody's got any questions. Hmm. I think people have been answering the questions for you. Oh, my tech support just told me it looks like people have been answering the questions, so that's good. Um, okay. I know there's a lot of downtime while people at home are practicing, but that's kind of how it has to be because I don't want people trying to watch me and feed their puppy at the same time. So um, if you're sitting at home watching, just look at this puppy's cute face. It's awful cute. Good girl. Good girl. At some point she might have to go out and busy, but probably not yet. But what I am going to do is give her a little toy to play with. Good girl. 
Otherwise she's gonna start eating my hand or her leash. Good girl. What a good baby you are. Good girl. Let's see, I'll check my notes, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I always bring notes to class, even though I do this a, a thousand times. Okay, very good. So far, so good. Good girl. We never want to keep our puppy's brain working for too long because they just, most of them just can't concentrate for all that long. Right, baby? She says, I could if food is involved. Good girl. Um, somebody wants Will to play the ukulele during downtime. It's Melissa. Hey, tech support. No. He says no. <laughs> Maybe next week when we're better at this. <laughs> oh, somebody's getting puppy fever. We have more. We can help you guys with that. Good puppy. You're so cute, pup pup. I think we're probably about three minutes into our waiting time. I'm trying to figure out how many times this puppy is gonna have to, can go, or how long she can go without going outside. I'm thinking probably half an hour. Can I call someone tech support if I'm not paying them? Um, yes, <laughs> yes, that's an easy question to answer. My unpaid tech support. Good girl. All right, hopefully your puppies at home are all doing pretty good with this. Um, and if you didn't get to five, then don't worry about it. It doesn't need to be exactly five. You're probably gonna be doing this a lot more because this is just day one and you have a whole week to do, um, a whole week to practice this stuff. So you do not have to get it on day one. All right, once you've lured your puppy on about five times, we're going to try to move on to the next step, which is seeing if the puppy will step up on its own. Um, because we've taken a break about five minutes for me, then I'm, gonna, I'm still going to lure her on one time just to kind of jump start it. And then I'm going to switch to marking and rewarding her. So marking and rewarding, that's new for this lesson. Uh, when you mark the puppy, you say the word yes and give them a treat. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things to remember about the marker word, yes. Uh, one is that it, every time we say it, they always get a treat. So even if you say it at the wrong time and you realize you messed up, then your puppy still has to get a treat. The reason for that is that uh, we want them to know for sure that every time they hear yes, a treat is coming. That's what makes yes powerful. So if you're using, if you're in the habit of using the word yes as praise, like good girl, yes, I know baby, uh, then that is going to make training more difficult because the power of the marker word is that it always predicts a treat 100% of the time. Um, the other important, well one other important thing about yes is that you have to know before you start training your puppy something new exactly what the puppy has to do to earn the word yes. So um, that can be difficult. Uh, for this next exercise, what we want her to do to get the word yes is we want her front feet up on the paw pad and we want her to choose to put them up on the paw pad herself without just following the lure. Uh, a lot of times in the beginning, they just will take, put one foot up and I will still yes that the first couple times because I want her to know that that is the thing I want her to do, move toward the paw pad and get some part of her body up on it. But, so I, I might guess her a few times for putting up just one foot, but then I'm going to try to uh, encourage her to put up two feet after that. I'm, I'm still gonna give her more than one treat for each yes on this time, just because I have not given her a lot of practice with the paw pad. So uh, I, I want to cement in her mind the idea that this is a good thing. So. Uh, also, when we're saying yes, we do not want our hands to be in our treat bag like this. A lot of people, the normal human thing to do is to put your hand in your treat bag so that you're ready the second your puppy gets up to say yes, 
and then give them a treat. And that's fine, a fine idea, but the problem with that is that the puppy will then begin watching your hand and that will make your puppy curl over here where the treat bag is uh, and stay out of position. We want them listening for a marker, not looking for one, if that makes sense. Uh, I know that for a while we were having people put the treat bag over here uh, with little puppies and puppy K on the left side. And that works too. Honestly, I just couldn't get my hand coordinated enough because I was too used to over here. So it's fine to have it on the right side. Just make sure that when you bring the treat to the puppy, you're bringing it straight to the puppy's mouth like this, as opposed to letting the puppy come over here and like bring her nose over here. Uh, she's getting tired or she would have gotten up and done that. Uh, so we're going to bring the treat to the puppy and we want it to stay in good position the whole time. Now she doesn't know what the word yes means yet, but she's going to figure it out very quickly. So I know that some people do the exercise of loading the word yes, which means teaching the puppy what yes means by saying yes and giving a treat, saying yes and giving a treat. Uh, I don't do that just because I don't, it, it doesn't seem to me to be necessary. Um, they figure out very quickly that yes predicts a treat and they will very quickly learn that that word means something important as long as you use it consistently. Um, so you also want to make it sound the same every time. So we don't want to sometimes say yes and sometimes say yes because that's not the same thing to the dog. So ideally it should sound the same every time like yes and then a treat and yes and then a treat yes I guess I am kind of loading the marker word after all even though I said I didn't have to there you go good girl all right so the toy's going up pop that's coming down and I'm going to back her up and lure her on just one time because, like I said, it's been a few times since, a few minutes since I did it last time. So here's my lure. Bring her up to the paw pad. Good girl. When we just lure, we don't use the marker word because, uh, because they're not really thinking about it. They're just following our hand. Good girl. Very good. Good puppy. All right, now I'm going to back her up. And I am going to get a couple of treats in my hand this time. Um, I'm not going to actually lure her onto the pop head, but I want my hand to be very fast to her mouth when she gets up on it herself. Uh, this I'm only going to do this a couple of times because normally we do not keep treats in our hand. We don't want that to do that because we don't want them looking at our hand. But in the beginning, it's okay to have a few in your hand because I may need to lure her too. She may just stand there and not do anything at all. So that would tell me she needs to have a couple more lures. Ready? Ready? So I'm just going to kind of jump start her here and then I'm going to walk forward and put my foot into position here. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Good job, puppy. Such a good girl. What a good girl. So she only put one foot up that time, but I wanted to definitely let her know. I saw that as soon as she did it and I wanted to let her know that's what I want. Um, probably this puppy's going to run out of energy before too long. So I want to try and keep her really engaged and excited. You ready? And that time I had about four treats in my hand. I'm still going to get about the same amount this time. Ready, pop up? Ready? Come on. So I'm going to wait, see if she does it herself. This is really common where they just sit here. A lot of times if you wait them out, then they will, um, they'll go ahead and step up themselves. So I'm going to wait probably at least, I don't know, 15 or 20 seconds. And if she doesn't get on, then I'm going to lure her again. Waiting, waiting, waiting. This is tricky because you don't want to give in too soon. You want to let them think about it, but you also don't want to let them kind of tune out. She's looking at it. Yes, good girl. Oh, I love it when they make me look like I know what I'm doing. Good girl. What a good girl. And honestly, I was about to just give up and lure her. So it's not like this is a black and white after this much time you lure. Good girl. Yay. You're such a good papa. All right, so bring her back again. You ready? Hey, pop up. Come on. Yes, good girl. And so she jumped up a little bit after I yesterday. That's okay. That's just enthusiasm about a new, 
uh, about doing a new skill, and I'm not going to uh, worry about that. We want them enthusiastic. Good girl. Good job. You're a good puppy. You want to do it again? When they're little, it's really easy to just pick them up and move them back. If you have like a big 30 pound puppy, then it might be easier just to call them and, uh, and bring them back that way. Ready? Come on. Oh, let me give it treats. Come on. Oop. I almost lured her and then I stopped myself. Any motion towards that paw pad, I'm going to do it. She's going to try other things, like maybe she's going to jump up. She's looking at it. I'm trying not to look right at her. Don't make eye contact. Use peripheral vision. She's thinking about it. I think she's going to move. Yes! Good girl! So the position wasn't perfect, but she did, she moved forward and she put her feet up on it. So a lot of times, just when you're ready to give up, that's when they're gonna do it. She's in a really floppy position right now. <laughs> her legs are kind of splayed every which way. Good job, pup pup. A good girl. You're such a good girl. It would be better to do this on a non-slip surface, but oh well. Ready? I think she's probably queuing off of my stopping is what she's doing. <laughs> yes, good girl. Good job. Very good puppy. What a good girl. Good job, pup pup. All right, I'm gonna pick her up and take her outside to busy really quick. Uh, so those of you at home with puppies, try what I just did. Lure, them, lure her on one time and then carry the puppy back, set it on the ground, and try to let it come forward on its own to the paw pad. But you, you should be walking with it, like just, just as if you were luring but without the lure right in front of its face. Um, then if your puppy stops short of the paw pad, then you can wait them out about uh, probably 20, 20 to 25 seconds, somewhere in there. Uh, if, the, if needed, then you can lure them on, but a lot of times if you wait, they'll just do it. Um, if they run right over the paw pad, that happens too. If you have one of those full steam ahead puppies and they just charge over it, then try to watch the moment when their foot touches. Yes, that, and get your food down to their mouth as quick as you can, um, even if they're already over the paw pad by then. All right, we'll be back. Okay, I did not. 
pick up my paw pad. Let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, if you have, are doing this at home with your puppy and your puppy is not quite getting it, don't worry about that. This often takes more than one session. Uh, she doesn't really understand fully that I want her to step up on the paw pad. I mean, she's getting there, but she's still doing a lot of guessing, which is totally normal. Uh, remember, this exercise, teaching this, is designed to take a week. So there's designed to be a week between practices. So uh, I'm just glad she's given me enough that I can reward her with. Good girl. She's very sweet. Very sweet. Uh, yeah, and by the way, she did busy when I took her out. I'm prepared in case she didn't, but she did, so that's good. By the way, how often does a little puppy have to go out? All the time. They always have to go out. If they're awake and playing, and it's been more than 15 or 20 minutes since their last pee, they need to go out again. And if you take them out and they don't go, then you need to bring them back in for just a few minutes and then bring them back out again. Just because they didn't go doesn't mean they don't have to go. They do. They probably were just too distracted when you have them out. Uh, so anytime I have downtime, I've usually got something for the puppy to do. Um, those of you that have been in Puppy K with me have heard me say that um, expecting our puppy to settle quietly through kindergarten class is like taking a toddler to a poetry reading. You just wouldn't do it because they don't have, most of them don't have the ability to do that and they need to be doing stuff with their mouth. So I always keep a toy with me because otherwise she's biting my hands or biting her leash and I'd rather she bite this, right? Good puppy. Good girl. And now we can practice drop it too. Right? Drop it. Good girl. School time again. Okay, pup pup. So, we're going to go to the last stage of the paw pad for today. So the first stage was luring. The second stage was waiting for her to do it herself and then marking. And this stage is going to be moving to direct delivery of treats for holding positions. So I'm going to start off with a lure because I always like to do that after break. So I'll put it down here. She's looking at it. She already knows. I'm going to get a lure up to her nose, put my left foot in position. Good girl. She's sitting right away now. She tells me she's probably getting tired. And her feet are just sliding out from under her. Note to self, next week I'm gonna get a carpet. Good girl. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'll go back to what I just did. So I'll let her step herself up onto the paw pad. Uh, and when I do, when she does, I'm going to mark her. So I'm going to say yes and treat her. And then I'm going to wait for probably two or three seconds and then say yes and treat her again. And do that probably three or four times before I reset her. Um, what we're starting to teach her now is duration on the paw pad is what we want. Let me try this light on. Uh, is that better or worse? Tech, is that better or worse? The light on. Better without. Better without, okay. She's got a lot, of, lot to learn about camera angles. All right, so I'm gonna get some treats ready in my hand. Um, I, I know we say don't have them in your hand, but in the very beginning when the puppy doesn't know yes, you do need some in your hand because you do need tr fast treat delivery before the puppy knows what yes really means. All right, ready? Let's go. I bet she's going to jump or bark pretty soon. She just looks like it. Yes, I was wrong. That was good. So there's one treat, and then I'm going to take my hand away. Yes, and then I'm going to do it again. Yes. And notice, I'm not letting a lot of time go by here at all. It's very little time. Yes. And I'm not even standing all the way up, because if I did, I think she would jump off. Yes. Good girl. Yes, good girl. That's a good girl. Do you guys think she's getting yes? I do. So every time I say it, I see her head go like that. Good pup. All right, so you see the difference from that and what I was doing last time? Last time I was giving her one yes and just feeding her a bunch of treats. 
and not really expecting her to hold position without the treat. And now I'm expecting her to hold position for about one second. It's not going to be any more than that today. Okay, ready? Come on, pop, pop, pop. Come on, pop, pop. Yes, good girl. So even though she went over it, I did. I still marked her at the right time. So I'm just going to kind of move her back into position with my treat hand. Yes, that is really common if they run over the pop pad and don't stop. Yes, yes, that was really bad on my part because I didn't have enough treats in my hand, so don't do that. Yes, good girl. All right, so we'll back her up and try it again. I don't actually think she needs this leash, she's getting in my way. So we're gonna take it off probably when she'll run off after the cat because I don't have it on anymore. You ready? Come on, come on. Wait her out. I always wonder what they're thinking right there. A lot of times they'll look like they get it, they totally get it, and then they'll look like they totally have no idea. That's normal too. She's looking up at me waiting for something. Is she going to move or is she going to lay down? Yes, good girl! Good girl! That was really sloppy of me right now because I did not mark her. baby. So everything she's doing right now is completely normal. That's 100% normal for a first puppy kindergarten. So if your puppy does that, sometimes it gets right on the pop pad and sometimes it just kind of stalls out and looks like it's daydreaming about something else. That is really normal. And in just a couple more sessions, she's not going to be doing that anymore. You ready? Come on. Yes, good girl. Look at that. That was perfect. Yes. How many people saw me about to stick my hand in my treat bag? Yes. 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 Good girl. What a good puppy. All right, now let's practice at home time. So for those of you with puppies, um, do what I just did. You can lure your puppy on once and then go back to expecting them to step on their own. And then once they do, then you mark the initial step up and you hopefully still have about three or four other treats in your hand. And then you wait for one second and then yes again and treat again. And then one second and yes and treat. One second and yes and treat. And I would not stand all the way up between yeses because if you do, your puppy can uh, take flight and run off somewhere else. Or if you have one of the calmer puppies, your puppy might lay down and go to sleep because we're about at that stage in the first puppy K where that's what they do. Right pup? I'm just going to let this cute pup up chew on her toy while I look at my notes and make sure I know what we're doing next. I feel like I forgot to talk about something. What was it? No, we can't eat that. That that. Okay, I guess I didn't. Um, this puppy is nine weeks, whoever asked. She's a D20. She's awful cute, aren't you? She's a very cute puppy, but I consider her to be like a very average puppy in terms of her response to this first training exercise. Oh, 
What a good pup. Good pup, pup. Yes, you are. You are such a good pup, pup. I cannot see all the comments on my computer for some reason. I don't know why. I could see them on my phone if I had my glasses, maybe. Eh, maybe not. Good girl. What a good little pup pup. No, it's fine. I bet there's some older puppies at home listening to me and getting very excited when they hear yes as much as they're hearing it. Come back here, pup-pup. Nobody wants to look at me. They want to look at you. Come here. Good girl. All right, we're going to put the leash back on because it's almost time for ground tether. Good pup-pup. So if anybody is at home and they feel like this is going too fast and you're not getting enough repetitions in, uh, we are going to keep this video up, although I still have not figured out how to save it where it's easy to find. It saves in the videos, but I can't figure out how to make an album in the video. So if anybody is more Facebook tech savvy than me, uh, it shouldn't be that hard to make an album because it's really easy to do uh, with your own videos and your own Facebook page, but in a group page it seems to be different. So um, we're still working on that, but in the meantime it will be in the video section. Okay, uh, with your puppies at home, go ahead and pick up the paw pad and give them a toy and we're going to talk about tethering. Uh, today's exercise is ground tether, stepping on the leash. So, when we talk about tethering, what we're talking about is uh, we're teaching the puppy that no matter how hard they pull, they're not going to be able to move us. Uh, the way that puppies learn to lunge is that when they pull on the leash and when, <laughs> when our arm moves and they, they get to go for what they want and they get to reach it, then they learn that if they put their muscle into the leash, they can move us. So we want to imagine that we're something fixed and immovable like a power pole or a fence post or something else that doesn't move. If we tie our dog to a, uh, to a tree, they could lunge as hard as they want. They're not going to move the tree. And that's what we want to be when we hold our dog's leash. Um, it's really hard for us to do that because our instinct is to let our arm just go out in front of us when they pull. Um, for that reason, we are starting with what's called a ground tether instead of a hand tether. And that's just to teach you all uh, and to teach your puppy uh, how to resist letting your puppy move you. So for this ex exercise, you will need the leash on your puppy and you will also need a helper if you have one. If you don't have one, you can be your own helper um, and I'll tell you how to do that when we start this exercise. But a helper is best. So we are also going to need something to distract the puppy with, preferably something the puppy would like to investigate or put in its mouth. And that obviously can be anything. That's my distraction right there. <laughs> my first one. Um, okay. So a, a, a distraction can be anything that your puppy would want to put in its mouth. And of course, I'm sure some of you are thinking that's everything in the world and that is correct. So it should be really easy to find one. Uh, I like a big distract, I like a bigger thing that the puppy can't grab and swallow. Uh, I wouldn't want to use just a tiny little piece of food because the puppy can get that down the hatch really quickly. So I want something that will be exciting, but not that will blow its mind. Like I wouldn't want to bring a live chicken in here because that would just be too much for the puppy. So I want something that's going to make the puppy go, ooh, I like that, but not completely lose its mind. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, ooh, puppy's getting bitey. I think this puppy has had almost enough of this training session. Um, so you're going to stand up and hopefully you're wearing closed toed shoes with a nice firm uh, sole because if you have flip flops, the leash can easily slip right out from underneath you. So what you're going to do is step on the leash under the ball of your foot and you want it so that the, probably about two feet of leash total so that when the puppy is in good position by your side, um, the leash is slack. What we want to do with the distraction is we actually want to get the puppy distracted enough to pull towards it 
and then we're going to see the leash go taut when that happens and we are going to wait for the puppy to take off the tension on the leash and when it does even if it's just a little bit because eventually the puppy is going to look back at me kind of like hey what like what's going on i want that why can't i get it and when i get the puppy to look back at me and slacken the leash a little that's when i'm going to yes uh, so while position is not quite as critical for this exercise as it is for other exercises, I still don't want to start it with the puppy looking like this because that's just going to confuse her. I'm going to just pick her up and put her back over here. So I'm going to have my distractor present the distraction and she's going to pull towards it if he does it right. Now I'm going to wait. Yes, good girl! And he's going to remove the distraction when I'm rewarding her. So I do like to feed her back by my side because it just makes it easier to reset for the next one. Um, and also, even though position isn't critical on this one, the most critical thing is that the puppy loosens the tension. I just don't see any harm in always getting them back here as quickly as I can. So, all right, we're going to do it again. He can bring it closer. If she doesn't get up or move it or shake it or something. Um, yes. Okay, so I, I decided she controlled herself long enough and I'm going to yes that. There's actually two things you can yes in this exercise. You can yes the puppy not lunging and you can also yes the puppy lunging and taking tension off, um, if that makes sense. So <laughs> that's another reason I like ground tenor. If I'm stepping on the leash, she cannot jump up all the way up on me. Um, all right, so I'm going to reset her, get her back in position here. And again, I just do that, not because that's where she has to be, but because it's easier to me to make the point if she's in that position. Okay, go ahead. Drop it. Ah, move it back just a little bit. Yes, good girl. So that was my fault. I let my distractor drop it too close to her and she could actually get it, which teaches her the wrong lesson. That teaches her pool and you can get the thing that you want. So that's my fault. Don't do what I did. Um, if you have your distractor, make sure that you let them know don't drop it too close to the puppy because otherwise she'll just grab it and then she learns, oh, I can pull and I can get it. Okay, so I have my distractor drop it again. Yes, I'm going to reward that, although I, I think that she's just getting tired. Like, I think she's running out of energy and that's why she didn't get it. But I don't want her to think that that isn't what I want because that is what I want. It's just that I also want her to pull towards it a little bit because I want her to learn that slackening the leash brings reward. So um, two things you can reward, like I said, if they pull and then they stop pulling and also uh, if they don't pull at all. Okay, we're going to try a different distraction. So get the sock and let me line her up next to me. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, you can like slap it on the floor and then drag it a little bit closer. Yes, good girl, good, good job. You might have to have me use food because she's just not interested enough in the sock. I'm gonna try the sock one more time. She's not interested in that, so I'm going to give him some food. You have food? Okay. Oops. Yes, good girl. I believe she saw that treat drop, so I'm going to yes and reward her for that. Okay, so go ahead and come towards her. I'm going to hold out your food in. Yes, good girl! Good girl! Good job! And one more time. where I could have asked him to get closer and have her pull, but it's hard for me not to reward that when I can see her staring right at him. She, she knows it's there. She's clearly deciding not to go for it, even though it might be because she's tired. That's completely possible, but I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so if you're at home, go ahead and... Oh, oh I've, I'm sorry. I meant to show you what you can do if you don't have a distractor. So if you do have a distractor, start playing with your distractor and... If you don't have a distractor, get your foot in ground tether position, ball of your foot on the leash, um, take your distraction and drop it in front of the puppy, but not so close the puppy can get it. 
So I'm gonna guess. Yes, it's not a very good distraction. So I'm gonna try to find a better distraction. Let's see, how about, yes, good girl. She was distracted by him, so I'm still gonna yes and reward that because she pulled toward him and then she gave it up. Um, let's see, how about my bag of lentils? Lentils are not exciting to her. Yes, good girl. Um, this actually happens often. The puppy is so tired by the time we get to impulse control that they're, they're not really going for anything. If I had done this at the beginning, she totally would have gone for those things. But that's how you do it if you, if you don't have another distractor. You just drop it far enough in front of your puppy that, um, that your puppy can't actually get their mouth on it, but still will be tempted to try. And this puppy normally tries to put everything in the world in her mouth, so that's how I know for sure that she's tired. So you guys go ahead and practice at home. Good girl, you're such a good puppy. You are such a good puppy girl. Yes, you are. Good baby. Good girl. This puppy's going to sleep. It's going to make body handling real easy. Good girl. I know. I know you're so awful cute. Now don't be a bitey girl here. Having something to put in your puppy's mouth is always the best defense against biting. They pretty much all bite. If they didn't, I would think something was wrong with them. That's why I never go anywhere without something they can have. And at this age especially, they, they do like soft things and they can have them as long as you're watching to make sure that they don't eat them. Because nobody wants an obstruction, especially not now, right? Good girl. Good girl. I'm getting sleepy too. We both forget the cameras on. We'll just sit here and play with the puppy. No, we're not going to do that because we still have to talk about body handling. So we're going to end on body handling. Probably would have been easier if I hadn't gotten her all riled up with this toy. Uh, body handling is very important. Uh, we just had a Dear RM posted today about body handling and I hope that you all read it. I'm sure that you did. Uh, and we want to start that from the time the puppy is very small. So I'm going to take away this toy because it's making her kind of activated and that's the opposite of how I want her right now. Put, actually, we're going to practice drop it. She should know this, but I haven't been practicing this as much as I should. Drop it. Good girl. Okay, so now I'm going to see if I can get her back where she was before because a minute ago she was really calm and... I think she's not too far from getting really sleepy, so we want to use gentle, calm strokes like this, down her head, down her back, down her sides to her feet. Good girl. And I'm just going to name parts of your puppy's body. You can go ahead and get, if you can get down the floor with your puppy, that's probably the easiest way to do it. If you can't get down the floor, it's no problem. You can do it from a chair or, um, some, some other position, whatever you find the most comfortable. But we definitely want to be calm and slow. And if your puppy gets a little bit mouthy, you can kind of take your finger and put it under her collar, like under her chin, and just hold her head just until she stops flailing around with her teeth. So we're going to touch their ears. We're just going to slide our fingers down the ear flap. We don't have to go inside the ear or anything like that. Actually, I'll see if she'll sit in my lap. Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. Good girl puppy. She's got to be getting tired. Good baby. I know you're such a good girl. 
There's a good girl. Touch, try the ear again, just slide down the flap, very nice. And then we're gonna try down the front legs to the feet and we're not doing anything with the feet except just running our fingers over them. Good girl, nice. And then if your puppy's not being super mouthy, then you can take your finger and just kind of run along the mouth like that, pull under the chin. If they start getting mouthy, take your hands away from the face. Good girl. A good baby. Yes, you are. I should not have done that. I looked in her face and now she wants to bite my face. So I'm just going to stick my thumb under her collar again like that and just kind of hold her still. Shh, shh, shh. And she's going to hopefully stop flailing pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> or she may just have had enough and be ready to be done. Oh, there she goes. That's what I was hoping would happen. Good girl. Except that she's still biting her leash, so let me get rid of that. To make my life any harder. Good girl. Shh. And some puppies, when they get tired, this is what they do. They get activated and start wanting to put things in their mouth. Other puppies, by the time you get here, your puppy might be passed out right now and does not care what you do to it. And that's great if that's your puppy. I'm going to try to touch her back feet. Good girl. I'd like her to do. I'd like to just see if I can get her to lay down there. Good baby. I think she wants a drink. I'm just going to try to touch her tail really quick. Good puppy. Good girl. You can have a drink just in a minute. Give me a second to read the homework. All right, so I'm going to read your homework for this week. And I will, well, actually, I was going to say I can send it out to the ACs, but all of your ACs have their homework, uh, have the homework already because it's straight out of the curriculum. So if you want to know what the homework is, your AC can send it to you. How about that? Um, but before we talk about exact assignments, we don't want to do marathon training sessions with the puppy. This is actually a really long training session for a puppy. It's much better to do lots of little short ones, five minutes or, uh, or even just a few minutes, not necessarily five, several times a day. Um, a lot of us have a lot of time right now. So you can definitely do a lot of training sessions. Just make sure your puppy gets a lot of downtime too because they need a lot of time to sleep. Um, if, you're, if your puppy is in a mood and they were, they're not doing anything, just put away the paw pad and come back later because we don't want you frustrated. We don't want the puppy frustrated. And they will be in a learning mode at some points, even if it's not right now. Uh, so we're going to practice the paw pad every day. Um, anywhere from one to three times a day. I would say three is better if you can and no more than five to ten minutes like I said. Um, we are going to try to get the puppy stepping up on the paw pad by themselves. You might have to lure for um, maybe another day or so. But a lot of times if you start a session with luring and then you wait and see if the puppy will do it on its own uh, after you lure a couple times then that will get your puppy stepping up on it pretty quick. Once they get to the point where they're getting on it, you will not be able to keep them off it. I promise that. And virtually everybody's puppy, I've known one puppy, I think in my whole career, that had some difficulty getting onto the pop pad, not more than that. So it's probably not gonna be your puppy. Um, they are gonna come to love this thing. Uh, you should practice ground tether too, at least a couple times a day, and try to get creative with your distractions. Um, she didn't really give a good, great example of ground tether because she wasn't lunging for distractions like I kind of wish she would have been. Um, next time maybe we'll start with ground tether so she has more energy because I really want to make sure that people know um, what it looks like when the puppy releases attention. A lot of times it's only a very small release of tension like they'll take one little tiny step back or their their head doesn't necessarily go like this to you but it will go like you know like a little jerk back and like maybe an eye roll back to you. Um, even that even if it's little then mark and reward that and then give them the treat in position by your side so that they get back in the heel position. Um, body handling, do as much of it as you can when the puppy's in a receptive mood. Like she now is. She turned from a tiger into a little lap kitty. And now she's letting me touch her everywhere, including her mouth. Um, so we definitely want them to get used to all of those kinds of things. Um, if you have questions or concerns about your marker word yes and your treat delivery, 
Probably the best way to do that right now is film yourself doing it and then send the video to your AC or your RM, however you guys work that out. And we can tell you if you're doing it right or if, uh, if they're, and if you're not, if you're confused by it, we have exercises that you can do to make it better. So we are at the end of this training session. Um, tech support, can you get in here and get ready to turn my phone off? Thank you. Uh, I hope you all have a great time playing with your, not yet. Yeah, I hope you all have a great time working with your puppies and training them these early foundational skills that are so important. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a good night.